For years, people across the United States have been receiving mysterious letters sent by a man using the name Matthew Thornton. These letters cover a wide range of topics, some conventional like astronomy or geology, and others more esoteric. The singular nature of these letters and the cryptic messages they contain has captured the attention of multiple communities on Reddit, where Thornton's letters are frequently posted. Over the years, Thornton has become a strange curiosity on the site, with some people trying to decipher the meaning behind his letters, while others try to understand the man behind them, if in fact he is even a real person at all. The earliest confirmed example that I can find of someone publicly posting a letter from Matthew Thornton comes from an image posted to the r slash funny subreddit on June 15th of 2014. The post was titled, Matthew Thornton, a signer of the Declaration of Independence, sent a letter to the Penn Museum today. This particular image, dubbed the Secret of America, is very complex and laden with interconnected symbolism. There are three main components that make up the bulk of the collage. From left to right, they are as follows. An image of George Washington, wreathed in clouds with a depiction of the U.S. Capitol building behind, or possibly floating above him in the heavens. Thornton appears to have written 49 degree line and decoded on the image itself. Next, there is what appears to be a map of the Milky Way galaxy, a portion of which is highlighted. By far, the element that really dominates the collage is what you might at first glance mistake for a religious painting. And in a way, it is. This painting, which adorns the dome of the rotunda in the U.S. Capitol building, is known as the Apotheosis of Washington. Essentially, it depicts George Washington ascending into heaven to sit alongside goddesses and angels. Additionally, Thornton has tried to draw a comparison between the center of the painting and the map in the second image, as well as highlighting a few features that seem to have corresponding shapes. Already, we have a bit of a connection going on between a few of the images, even if the exact meaning isn't clear but the other elements of the collage add even more uncertainty to the mix. First is the phrase in the top right corner, reading, Nearest Sun System Acknowledged, Alpha Centauri, USA. This is compounded by the addition of A.G. Arcturus, next to which is a small picture of a dog in the phrase, Bring Your Boots, spelled B-O-O-T-E-S. Interestingly, Arcturus is the brightest star in the Boots constellation. The bottom right features two small elements, the first is a diagram of planet Earth with the South Pole and a mention of Operation High Jump. In simplest terms, Operation High Jump was an ill-fated expedition to the South Pole led by Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd in 1947, with the intention of establishing a U.S. research base in Antarctica. Due to the misfortunes suffered by the expedition, their retreat from Antarctica, and Admiral Byrd's later statements warning about the possibility of planes invading the U.S. by flying over the poles, Operation High Jump has become a focal point of many conspiracy theories, particularly those related to UFOs and or secret military bases. Finally, there is this strange quote, In my spirit, I know God has called us to do this, and I pray he will stir your heart to join us. From what I can find, this seems to be a quote from a prayer letter written by Christian evangelist Billy Graham in 2012, titled, My Heart Aches for America. In the letter, Graham laments the decline of America, which he likens to Sodom and Gomorrah. Strangely, the Graham quote differed slightly from the one used in Thornton's letter. In my spirit, I know God has called us to do this, and I pray he will stir your heart to join us in prayer and support. What does this all mean? I have no fucking clue. And it doesn't get any simpler from here. Following this post, it would be over four years before another thread featuring a mysterious letter from Thornton was made. On April 28th of 2018, user Yesi22 made a thread on the Reddit Bureau of Investigation subreddit about a letter that was sent to the veterinary clinic where they worked. This letter differed significantly from the first Secret of America letter, but it also established multiple running themes that are now hallmarks of Thornton's style. The first being the front of the envelope, which bore the name Matthew Thornton, Western United States, 120 degrees west, and a rudimentary drawing of the state of California. The letter contained three pieces of paper, folded in half, and each bearing a cryptic phrase, Summer light reaches a room, 2017 we all go to Half Dome, and Half Dome. It's debatable which order these were meant to be read in, but I'll start with the one simply titled Half Dome, as it seems to be the one laying out the basis of Thornton's message. On the inside is another collage made from cutout images assembled together and photocopied. 
though this one is a bit simpler than the Secret of America collage. First, we have the phrase, looks over Pacific Crest, and a clipping of We the People from the Declaration of Independence. The focal point of the collage, however, are the two clippings in the center. One is an image of the Half Dome Formation in Yosemite National Park. Then there is an image of a relief from La Corona, Guatemala, purporting to be of Snake King Yuknum Chin II playing ball. Thornton then went over both images with the highlighter, seemingly to highlight a general similarity of shape between the two. The other two collages followed a similar concept, but with different stylistic choices. 2017 We All Go to Half Dome compares the Half Dome formation to an Egyptian statue, both of which are overlaid on top of what appears to be a magazine ad for Bragg's Organic Products, while Summer Light Reaches a Room compares Half Dome to the famous Moai statues of Easter Island. The background of this collage seems to be an upside-down drawing of some kind of farm or plantation, presumably in Northern California. Unlike the first thread made in 2014, this thread gained a little bit of interest, with several commenters proposing their own theories, such as the author trying to play a prank or possibly being schizophrenic. Still, there would be another lengthy gap between this post and the next mention of the mysterious letters from Matthew Thornton. A full 18 months later, user Miss Victoria C., made a thread in the R Conspiracy subreddit, which garnered significantly more attention than previous threads. The envelope once again bore the drawing of California, with Lake Tahoe highlighted in pink, and the sender identified as Matthew Thornton, Western United States, 120 degrees west. The contents of the letter was a folded piece of paper. On one side was a larger drawing of the state of California, accompanied by the sentence, a direct hit sunshine, and a mingled recovery mission to California Jackson. On the reverse was another collage, this time a partial map of North America takes up most of the page, with the words West Coast Impact Zone in the upper left corner. In the bottom left, there is what looks like a picture of a Chinese woodblock print of some sort. When rotated, you can read Thornton's editions. Gold ejecting from the sun, strikes California from the south, going north fast. Thornton also highlighted the tag on the print reading Ming Dynasty circa 1425. The only other piece of this collage is the image of a terrier dog sitting in a car. Much like the cat with the highlighted eyes from The Secret of America, this would become one of Thornton's calling cards. As far as the message goes, this is one of the most straightforward. Thornton thinks a solar mass ejection hit the west coast of America and created gold deposits, which the Ming Dynasty went in search of. This idea was expanded upon by a few people in the comment section of the thread, with one person claiming that the Chinese script in the image was a poem written by an officer of the Song Dynasty in 1006, describing a supernova SN1006, possibly the brightest supernova to be witnessed in recorded history. Is that true? I have no idea. But if you can read Chinese, tell me what you think. Twelve days later, a user posted a nearly identical letter this time sent to a salad and pizza restaurant in Arkansas. While the collage was the same, the envelope had a different set of sentences written on it. This time, a direct hit sunshine, followed by, this is a heavy metal producer, and Rover, though what order these are meant to be read in is unclear. While this thread didn't receive a ton of attention, the comments were all people saying they had been sent similar letters from Thornton at their restaurants. This was the start of another trend, as in the future, the vast majority of Thornton's letters were sent to restaurants, specifically pizza places. Case in point, a thread posted in the RBI subreddit on November 28th of 2018, detailing a letter sent to a pizzeria in Reno, Nevada. While this letter might seem like one of the simplest at first glance, it is also one of the most cryptic. On the front of the envelope, we see Thornton's now well-established hallmarks, but on the back, something's different. In opposite corners are the quotes, just 18 months apart, and strike two. It only gets stranger from here. That cat, again. And the lyrics to Another Day in Paradise by Phil Collins. Over 240 million views, see the video on YouTube. Maybe the back side of the page has more answers. Another drawing of California with Lake Tahoe highlighted in pink. Then there is a sentence, if it even is a sentence. Paradise, 30,000 new homeless, Jackson. Finally, on the west coast of California, the words, Hey Tubby. So what does it all mean? Well, the person who posted the letter to Reddit speculated that it might have had something to do with the 2018 wildfires that devastated parts of California throughout most of November. 
The 2018 Camp Fire was the deadliest and most destructive wildfire in California history, with 85 lives lost, tens of thousands of buildings destroyed, and over $16 billion in damage done. Especially hard hit was Paradise. According to Wikipedia, the towns of Paradise and Concow were almost completely destroyed, each losing about 95% of their structures. Following the wildfire logic, Hey Tubby could be a reference to the 2017 Tubbs Fire, which was the most devastating wildfire in California history until Camp Fire took that spot the following year. It should also be said that both the Tubbs and Camp Fires have been the focus of many conspiracy theories, specifically the idea that they were caused by the use of directed energy weapons. Looking back at that drawing, doesn't it seem strange the way the words Paradise, Jackson, and Hey Tubby are written? Almost as if the person behind the drawing intended them to correspond to certain points on the map. I mean, it would be pretty crazy if they did, right? Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Schizophrenia. As the top comment points out, quote, This person is making unusual connections between things that seem obvious to them, so no need for any narrative or explanation of what the stuff is or why they're sending it. End quote. This is an inescapable fact of the letter sent by Matthew Thornton. He makes no effort to explain what his message means, rather hinting at or making inside jokes that he is likely the only person to get. If we were to give him the benefit of doubt, maybe Thornton is trying to get people to seek out the truth on their own by leaving them breadcrumbs to follow, like a game. On the other hand, most of his letters seem to be little more than him drawing conclusions based on connections only he can understand, or simply because two things just happen to look alike, so they must be significant and related. Case in point, this letter is sent to a restaurant in Springfield, Missouri, where Thornton attempts to say that the Nazca Lines were a visual representation of the Earth's magnetic field, as seen by the Native Americans who witnessed a solar mass ejection. This is pretty classic behavior for paranoid schizophrenics, and it has dominated much of the letters that Thornton sent out during 2019 and early 2020. On May 15th of 2019, the Matthew Thornton subreddit was created by user 72 Skidoo. From this point on, it would serve as the main hub for letters sent by Matthew Thornton. 2019 was also when the number of posts about Matthew Thornton on Reddit increased dramatically. The reason for this is unknown. It could be that Thornton had increased his efforts, or the establishment of the Matthew Thornton subreddit made it much easier for people who had received letters to find information about the phenomenon and post their own letters to the community. Either way, dozens of posts were made during this time period. I'm not going to cover them all in detail because we would be here for hours. And in most cases, these letters fall into one of the general categories we've already covered. There are, however, a few letters that stand out. The most peculiar being a letter received by a diner in Portland, Maine on July 9th of 2019. In this letter, Thornton seemingly draws the conclusion that an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph of a cow was actually a depiction of North America. This concept was further iterated upon in a letter sent to a bar in Maine a few weeks later, then again in a letter sent to a coffee shop in Connecticut in late August. The Connecticut letter is especially bizarre because of the additional note included in the letter that claims that Rosetta Stone is a map of North America, with the data becoming more compressed further north you go. This letter also appears to be the earliest known mention of the Rupus Nigra by Thornton. The Rupus Nigra was a theory that at the North Pole there is a piece of magnetic black rock that is tens of miles across and sits inside a massive whirlpool. The rock was supposedly the reason that compasses pointed north. This idea was first proposed in the lost book known as the Inventio Fortunata, and was subsequently included in many maps over the following centuries. I probably don't have to tell you that this idea has been disproven, but it does feature quite frequently in Thornton's letters. The most bizarre aspect of this letter, simply because of how out of place it is, is a drawing of a stick figure man wearing some kind of collar around his neck. Thornton labels it a drone collar system, adding the quote, You will hear voices. When I read that line, I can't help but be reminded of quotes from the infamous writer Francis E. Deck in his conspiracy theories about various mind control devices. Look at the picture. See the skull, 
the part of bone removed, the master race Frankenstein radio controls, the brain thoughts broadcasting radio, the eyesight television, the Frankenstein earphone radio, the threshold brainwash radio, the latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls, even in thin skulls of white pedigree males, visible in following months, Thornton would continue down this track that the west coast of America had been secretly depicted in works of art centuries before it was known in mainstream history. Some examples include the Mona Lisa, the creation of Adam, and Lucas van Valkenborch's 1594 painting of the Tower of Babel. Thornton felt so strongly that this painting contained a depiction of North America that he left a comment on the talk page for Wikipedia's article about the Tower of Babel. This comment included his name and phone number. The most interesting aspect of this comment is that it was made in January of 2014, predating the letter sent to the Penn Museum. From the time these strange letters began to gain attention from the Reddit community, there were questions about the enigmatic man behind them. Who was he? What was his message? Why the name Matthew Thornton? As was noted in the very first post made about a Thornton letter on Reddit, Matthew Thornton was a lesser-known signer of the Declaration of Independence. Because most of the Thornton letters are focused on America and its secrets, this led many people to speculate that the decision was significant in some way. Unfortunately, this association has made hunting for information about Matthew Thornton rather difficult. As most searches will be dominated by results about the signer of the Declaration, and not the mysterious man sending letters to pizza places. For years, very little information was known about Matthew Thornton, other than his publicly posted phone number and the fact that he likely lived somewhere in the Sacramento area. That was until June 9th of 2020, when a user named Bobo21713 posted this thread in the Matthew Thornton subreddit. Quote, Hello Reddit. I had no idea this subreddit existed until today, but hopefully I can shine some light on the mystery. This is definitely the work of my uncle. He has some stuff going on for sure, including the use of the name Matthew as one of his identities. He is my father's brother, and while the letters are definitely odd, he is completely harmless and just wants to share his theories with other people. He used to live with us while I was in late, middle, early high school, which was about eight years ago now. He lives in California, although I have no idea where. He's definitely an enigma, though. I'd be happy to provide some pics of the letters my family has. I'm on the phone with my parents as we speak. Edit. Fix some of the wording for clarity clarification. Edit 2. Remove the name so it's less conspicuous. End quote. Interestingly, it seems that Bobo21713 revealed Thornton's real name in their post, but later removed it at the behest of her parents. There is no cached or archived version of this post, so the real name is no longer available, which is probably for the best. In the comments, Bobo21713 would add some additional information about her uncle and what his thought process was like. Quote, His way of thinking has always been a mystery for me as well. What I do know is that he hyperfocuses on the stars slash constellations and on finding similar shapes and objects that are otherwise unrelated. One of the main things he talked about when we were younger was the star Rigel. When he would talk to us about his theories, he would be in this sort of hypermanic state. It wasn't so much that he was completely incoherent, it was that the connections he was making didn't make a whole lot of sense to 14-year-old me, although the letters still don't make a whole lot of sense to me now, either. End quote. Obviously, the post was a bit dubious. Anyone could say they knew an anonymous person on the internet. But in a rare turn of events for Reddit, the OP actually delivered. On June 14th, Bobo21713 returned to the Matthew Thornton subreddit with proof of the letters sent by her uncle. Quote, Hello again. My mom scans some of the letters she has, and so I can finally share them with all of you. In one or two of them, he mentions giving us $100 if we could prove his theories wrong. On one of the letters, I had to black out one of the lines because it includes his phone number, which I definitely don't think should be put on here. LOL. Let me know if you have any questions regarding any of the letters. Edit, I forgot to mention these are from roughly 2010-2011. slash End quote. The letters posted by Bobo21713 are... A lot. In the first two images, Thornton is unusually direct in trying to explain his theories, but even with his forthrightness, the full scope of his message is still hard to piece together. It's clear he's interested in the Earth's magnetic field and believes that once the Earth has achieved buoyancy, 
it will be drawn towards one of the stars, either Sirius or Rigel. Beyond that, I have no idea. Other letters are hard to decipher even by the already cryptic standard of Thornton's work. Some are downright labyrinthine. Complex diagrams are entangled with an accompanying text that is extremely difficult to parse out due to its incoherent structure. The drawings also bear more than a passing resemblance to the artwork of people with schizophrenia. The eyes appearing out of nothing and blending into the drawings are particularly unsettling to me. But are these letters legitimate, or just a clever hoax? We will probably never know for sure. At first, they don't look much like the collages we've seen so far. But upon closer inspection, some of the same visual language can be seen. The drawing style and the way in which different images are compiled together is pretty similar, even if it was done in a different medium. The handwriting in several of the drawings is also very similar. This includes the characteristic capitalization of the letter L, as well as the unique way in which certain letters like the lowercase h is written. There is also the general disregard for conventional punctuation or sentence structure that makes it difficult to know how any given grouping of words should be read. That being said, it wouldn't be impossible to create a convincing simulacrum of another person's handwriting style. The lack of Thornton's usual calling cards, like the dog in the car or the cat with the highlighter eyes, makes the authenticity of these letters a bit hard to verify. And for some people, the story is just a bit too convenient. A person just so happens to come across an obscure Reddit phenomenon and recognizes that it's the work of a family member. However, it wouldn't take long to get confirmation from the man himself. On September 11th of 2020, a Reddit account by the name of Minimum Teaching 5816 was created. Shortly after its inception, the account replied to a thread asking why the mysterious letter writer had chosen the name Matthew Thornton. Quote, I am Matthew Thornton. Must know that there is only one of me like a voice in the wilderness. Look closely at the drawings, because they convey truth. Please text me your questions and be specific. I will use your voicemail using two-minute answers. Sometimes I use more than one voicemail to answer you. End quote. After this, Minimum Teaching replied to the thread six more times. Several of the replies were updates on where he was sending letters or requests for people to text him their questions. One post appeared to confirm that the user, Bobo21713, was in fact his relative. Quote, Katie is my niece, not nephew, and if your middle name is Thornton, shall I call you Joe Thornton Thornton? And you should know we have a James Thornton in our family tree. You must be a distant cousin. When Matthew Thornton finished his job as an American, he retired to his oldest daughter in Connecticut, pal. Did you know our family was a dynasty of doctors? You are talking to one. I was trained by my father and my mother. I have written several agencies. My work has been reviewed by Homeland Security and also a U.S. Senator from California. I have written all consulate generals in San Francisco, and my first cousin is a standing U.S. General United States Army. End quote. Of course, anyone could simply hop onto the subreddit and pretend to be Matthew Thornton. Frankly, I'm surprised somebody hadn't thought of it before this account was made. Nevertheless, the comments left by Minimum Teaching bear a pretty uncanny resemblance to the way Matthew Thornton writes. The odd way that sentences are put together without paying mind to grammar or punctuation. Thoughts that pop out of the blue without any context because they probably make perfect sense in his mind. Just imagine these quotes spread out hectically around a collage of half-dome and Egyptian hieroglyphs, and tell me it doesn't seem like something Thornton would say. Shortly after making his introductory posts, Minimum Teaching started branching out by responding to threads that posted his letters. The first example came when he replied to a thread made by user 40 Earth-like planets, who claimed their mother received the letter in 2013. If true, this would make it the earliest known Thornton letter. Curiously, this drawing has a similar aesthetic to some of the images posted by Bobo21713, only adding evidence to their authenticity. In the comments, Minimum Teaching attempted to explain the drawing's meaning. Quote, Quite simple, this is a drawing of the North Magnetic Eye, a global intake produced by Motion 24-7 Native Americans used to walk up here and surround the epicenter holding hands and would be lifted up in the air, and remember the practice of hooking themselves was shown in the movie called A Man Named Horse. I am Pomo born from the soil next to the Russian River. My father was the town doctor and I was born September 11th. My stepfather was John Richard Byrd Jr., also an Air Force man, equals same name attached to Operation High Jump, and I was trained in Louisiana before coming back to my home state. I live close to 120 West Ley Line, and I am ready to go north to the Rupus Nigra. End quote. 
Okay, so that didn't really help. In truth, most cases where Minimum Teaching tried to explain the meaning behind his letters, he didn't clear anything up. He would explain what specific images were and where they came from, which lent credibility to the idea that he was in fact Thornton, but rarely would he ever elaborate on the overall message of the piece, remaining as cryptic as he was in his letters. Now, it would take hours to go over every response he made on Reddit, so instead I'll only mention two in detail. The first was a response to a post made in June of 2020 featuring a collage that included a picture of an Egyptian hieroglyph, an image of the Milky Way, and Thornton's well-established comments about Alpha Centauri being our nearest star. Thornton's explanation was as follows, quote, Notice the shape of the Milky Way reveals our nearest sun system. Look close now of the shape of the Egyptian, and they match 100%. This section of space also contains a star, and Taris is a top candidate for going supernova. Antar preceded Muhammad Allah. Antar was also primary star of the Native Americans. There was another post that shows a Mesoamerica reference to this place in the sky. Antares is only 600 light years away from us. Once that you see that the Egyptian images are dedicated to our nearest star system makes this our first step into heaven. Sooner or later we get to go out there and explore these infinite planes. Our destiny is to be explorers. That is the general nature of man. Please accept the fact communication with heaven is a two-way street. Signs of heaven and earth are upon us all equals all eyes will see equals all ears will hear. Egyptian clip art used in this letter was taken from the book The Treasures of the Pharaoh by Delia Pemberton. All image contains sky profiles. Welcome to heaven. End quote. Next, he would respond to a thread made in July of 2020 that included one of his letters claiming that the creation of Adam was secretly a map of North America. Quote, quite simple. This is a drawing of North America produced in 1510 and is displayed on top of the Sistine Chapel. Remember Columbus never discovered America, not even Florida, man. This masterpiece shows the Gulf of Mexico and Florida, amigo. Notice the reach in by Adam is San Diego, Colorado River. And look, Dad reaches in from Brownsville, Texas, and the Rio Grande River. The fingers point to the 105 West Ley Line around Durango, Mexico. This looks like a treasure map. So send a team of smart people to Durango and look for a well equals Sistine. End quote. The latter case is especially interesting because as minimum teaching, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to call him Thornton from now on. The latter case is especially interesting because as Thornton became more comfortable on Reddit, he started visiting other subreddits. Of note was the subreddit for Tumblr. God, that sounds like a hellhole. On the Tumblr subreddit, Thornton encountered a few memes about the creation of Adam and angrily responded to them that it was actually a map of North America. Quote, they are all pointing to the 105 West Ley Line that passes by Durango, Mexico. Look closer at the painting of the creation of man, and you will see the geographic of Mexico was used as the backdrop of this masterpiece. Namibia? Try San Diego, man. Zimbabwe? Try Brownsville, Texas, dad. This is a map of Norte America. The fingers almost touched the 105 West Ley Line around Durango, Mexico, amigo. This is the secret of America. End quote. Several of Thornton's replies on the Tumblr subreddit were even stranger than this, such as replying to a screenshot of a girl talking about stretch marks with the quote, A girl in trouble is such a temporary thing, Romeo Void. A reference to the song A Girl in Trouble is a Temporary Thing by the band Romeo Void. Or when he posted a lengthy and bizarre rant about death in response to a meme about Greek gods and lobsters. And these replies were mixed in pretty randomly with replies to various threads in the Ireland subreddit and the Matthew Thornton subreddit, including 10 replies to one thread about that illness we can't mention that he made over a period of five months. Now, I read through the entire post history of this account, and I think it gave me a brain tumor. That being said, I did learn a little about Thornton from tidbits of information scattered throughout the subreddits. For instance, one of the big questions surrounding this mystery has been why Thornton primarily sends his letters to restaurants. Matthew answered this by saying that restaurants are places where people gather, and so they spread his message face to face. He also shared a few details about his life, like the fact that he is on disability, and spent around $2,000 a year on postage to spread his message. But from my perspective, the really interesting thing about Matthew Thornton is not who he is, but what his message is. What is the point he's trying to get across? Where is all of this headed? And is any of it even real? If you've been on the internet for a while, 
you've probably seen a few mysteries like this that turned out to be an ARG, a viral marketing campaign, or some big hoax or inside joke. Maybe even a wacky art project. So is this one of those cases? Let's look at the options. First, the idea that this is an ARG, or alternate reality game. This theory did crop up occasionally when the mystery started to gain some traction on Reddit. It is a compelling idea at first glance, but the more you look at the story, the less likely it seems. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but if it's an ARG, there has been an immense amount of dedication from the person behind the game. Somebody has been sending out letters for at least seven years, maybe longer. This is also a mystery that has been confined almost entirely to Reddit. Usually with ARGs, they have more of a presence on the internet, as their creators wish to spread the ARG around. Again, this could be an extremely dedicated individual or group trying to spread the ARG in a very grassroots method. It just seems unlikely to me. For the same reason, it seems unlikely that this is a viral marketing campaign. What company is going to plant seeds seven years in advance and only bother to advertise their product on one obscure subreddit? It just defies logic. A hoax or inside joke is a more plausible answer. In this case, the timescale doesn't really matter. If it's just all an elaborate prank started for the amusement of the prankster or pranksters, how long it takes to gain traction may not matter. This is especially true if you have multiple people working on the project. There are some problems with the hoax or joke theory, though. It would be a pretty huge undertaking, assuming it's just one person. If there are multiple people involved, this gets even trickier, unless you have some division of labor. You need somebody to come up with the ideas for all the letters, and you have to make sure all of the handwriting is pretty similar too. Then we have the issue of the minimum teaching account. Is this part of the hoax team? Who is sending letters all over the country? Or are they being faked too and posted on the subreddit to continue the mystery? What about the subreddit itself and the person claiming to be Thornton's niece? Is it possible that this is all a big hoax or joke? Sure. There are several people with convenient connections to the mystery. Accounts that stopped posting shortly after the mystery gained a little attention, but the scope of it all stretches credulity a bit. An art piece, on the other hand, solves all the problems we've laid out. Some artists are inhumanly dedicated to creating something new, unique, and challenging. An example that immediately comes to mind is the Codex Serafinianus, an illustrated encyclopedia created by Italian artist Luigi Serafini that depicts an imaginary world and is written in a gibberish language. Then we have the work of outsider artists like Henry Darger, who spent decades working in secret on multiple epic stories that span tens of thousands of pages with intricate and surreal mixed-media illustrations, generally known as the Realms of the Unreal. Similarly, James Hampton worked in secret for years on his Throne of the Third Heaven of the Nation's Millennium General Assembly, which was made from scavenged material like cardboard boxes and aluminum foil. He was inspired to undertake this project because of religious visions he said he received from God. That leads us to an interesting predicament. Darger and Hampton were compelled to create their works of art for reasons that nobody will ever truly understand. The same appears to be true of Matthew Thornton. He seems like a very knowledgeable man who has studied a wide array of subjects, but there is a meaning behind his work that is incomprehensible to other people. Even people who have spoken to him over the phone say that he doesn't make his message any clearer. It's a concept that apparently only he can wrap his mind around. And that could be for any number of reasons, as we've discussed. In a way, that is what makes his letters so fascinating. Their intangibility. You can look at a letter and recognize individual components. You might even be able to guess at their significance. But there is a connective tissue missing that puts the sum of all these parts just out of reach. What makes this mystery so interesting to me is that unlike other eccentrics such as Terry A. Davis who created Temple OS, or Gene Ray, the man behind the time cube theory, the story of Matthew Thornton is not finished. He continues to send out tons of letters. He also continues to cryptically reply to people on Reddit with explanations of his letters. Recently, Thornton has been adding screenshots of the Matthew Thornton subreddit to his letters, which in turn is leading more people to the subreddit and increasing the number of threads people are making. Up until now, the story has remained almost entirely isolated to Reddit. But as it continues to grow, I'm sure it will start to reach other corners of the internet. When it does, it's anyone's guess how Matthew Thornton will react. He knows about Reddit and YouTube, so what could the next step be for his project? 
Could we see a Matthew Thornton YouTube channel where he speaks about his message? Maybe it already exists and it's just waiting to be found. Whether the work of Matthew Thornton is a hoax or real, even if they're just the ramblings of some guy in California with schizophrenia, there is something enthralling about them. I think it is the same fascination that has made people study the Voynich manuscript for hundreds of years. Could it all be a hoax? A secret message encoded behind multiple ciphers? Who knows? But you want to get to the bottom of it. You want to understand the message, even if the message may be impossible for you to understand. As always, I want to thank- Actually, hold up for one moment, because there's one final thing I felt like mentioning. As I was recording and editing this video, I noticed something odd in the Matthew Thornton subreddit. A large number of posts had been made within recent months, and then nothing. For over three weeks, not a single post had been made until the day I wrote this final segment. And oddly, the post was also made by an account that was created only 13 days ago. Weird, yes, but there are reasonable explanations for this drought. It could be that Thornton creates huge batches of letters and mails them all within a relatively short period of time, which would create these peaks and valleys of posts. But the strange thing is, the minimum teaching account itself hasn't commented in 22 days, which is odd because that account had kept a pretty consistent pace when it came to posting. Like almost every other aspect of this bizarre case, the meaning of this drought in the absence of minimum teaching on the subreddit is a mystery, but it could be something to watch in the coming weeks. As always, I want to thank you for watching the video as well as liking, commenting, and subscribing. I understand that this video was pretty far out from my usual content, but I enjoy a good internet mystery and I would like to branch out into covering weird stories like this occasionally. So, if you found this video interesting and you'd like me to explore more off-the-wall topics like this, you can support me on Patreon. It will help me make content without being too worried about uploading constantly or trying to make my videos fit a certain style. And, obviously, I want to thank my current Patreon supporters who help make these videos possible. Thank you. Jabroni, Big Gay Lion Supporters of America, Fight Back CBD, Ryan Cedor, Zelda Z, Dan Thomas, Mike Robals, Trey Bolas, Lord Smoldemort, Snepsts, Ryan Williamson, I Said No Cops, Paulo Gomez, Alex, Ratman, Raghav Verma, Tambi Helmick, Bart Wackenar, The Son of Man, Neem, and Kevin Howard.